Hi, welcome to our short videos on Ask the Expert, where we take up questions asked by our viewers, clients, and colleagues pertaining to the cybersecurity industry. The questions are posted on our YouTube channel that you can see on the screen. Do subscribe to our channel where we post a lot of content and share information about the industry. You can see the link on the screen and read the description below to learn more about it. Do subscribe and click on the bell icon so you get notified about our latest video updates. Today, we have taken up a very popular and highly searched query on the search engine platform, which is the 12 requirements of PCI DSS compliance. PCI DSS, which is the payment card industry data security standard, is a compliance that businesses need to adhere to if they handle or deal with payment card data. The compliance is a mandate by the credit card companies to secure the credit card transactions in the payment industry. The compliance mandated refers to the technical and operational standards that businesses need to follow in order to secure the credit card data that is stored, processed or transmitted by the merchants. The standard which is developed and managed by the PCI Security Standard Council has broadly outlined 12 PCI DSS requirements. Let us today take a closer look at these 12 requirements outlined by the PCI Council. PCI DSS Requirement 1, which is install and maintain a firewall configuration to protect cardholder data. This requirement ensures that service providers and merchants maintain a secure network through proper configuration of firewalls. These firewalls are basically security measures that provide a first line of protection to your network. Appropriate configuration of these firewalls will protect your card data environment. These firewall filters the incoming and outgoing network traffic based on the rules and criteria configured by your organization. So, organization should establish a firewall and router standard that facilitates a standardized process for allowing or denying access rules to the network. Configuration of these firewalls and router rules should be reviewed half yearly to simply ensure that there are no insecure access rules that may allow access to sensitive cardholder data. Environment CIDSS Requirement 2 which is do not use vendor supplied defaults for system passwords and other security parameters. This requirement basically focuses on hardening your organization's systems such as servers, network devices, applications, firewalls, wireless access points, etc. Most of the operating systems and devices come with a factory default setting such as usernames and passwords or other insecure configuration parameters. These default usernames and passwords are simple to guess and even available on internet. So such default passwords and other security parameters may pose a huge threat to the environment. For these reasons, default passwords are not permissible as per the PCI compliance requirement. Further, as per the requirement, organizations must maintain an inventory of all the systems, configurations, and hardening procedures. These procedures need to be followed every time a new system is introduced in the IT infrastructure. Requirement 3, which is protect stored cardholder data, requires businesses to secure stored sensitive card data to prevent any sort of data breaches. For this, they must identify all the data in the environment and the location in which they are stored. Organizations must also define the retention period for storing such sensitive data. As per the requirement, the stored card data must be encrypted while also ensuring the encryption keys are also protected. Further, businesses are required to create and document a cardholder data flow diagram for all the card data that flows within the organization. A cardholder data flow diagram is basically a graphical representation of how and where the card data moves through the organization. As you define your environment, it is also important to ask all the departments if they receive any kind of cardholder information and the same needs to be documented for further reference. 
This is to basically see if it has any impact on the outlined card data flow. Requirement 4, which is encryption of transmission of cardholder data, requires businesses to secure the sensitive card data when it is transmitted over an open or public network. In fact, organizations are required to encrypt card data prior to the transmission process by using a secure version of transmission protocol such as the TLS, which is Transport Layer Security, and SSH, which is Secure Shell Protocol. This secures the entire data transmitting process in the card environment. Requirement 5, which is use and regularly update antivirus softwares or programs, basically requires an organization to focus on the security against all types of malware that can affect systems. All systems, including the workstations, laptops, and mobile devices that employees use for accessing critical systems both locally and remotely, must have an antivirus solution deployed on them. Organizations need to also ensure that the antivirus or the anti-malware program are updated on a regular basis to detect known malware. Maintaining an updated anti-malware program will prevent known malware from infecting the systems. This also ensures that the antivirus mechanism which is in place are always active and uses the latest signatures and generates auditable logs. PCIDSS Requirement 6, which is Develop and Maintain Secure Systems and Application, requires organizations to focus on two major areas, which is patch management and secure software development. This provides control on the frequency of patching as well as on developing software securely, which includes using secure coding standards, code reviews, web application firewalls and so on. The PCIDSS requirement basically requires organization to patch all critical components in the card flow pathway which includes internet browsers, firewalls, application software, database, POS terminal, and operating systems. PCIDSS Requirement 7, which is restrict access to cardholder data by business need to know. This requirement speaks about implementing strong access control measures in the cardholder data environment where the sensitive card data is stored. The requirement mainly covers the administrative side of access control. It includes defining who has access to what and implementing the best practices for restricting access. The requirement needs an organization to limit access to system components and cardholder data to only those individuals whose job re requires such access. This would include defining the access needs for each role, which may even include system components and data resources that each role needs to access for their job functions and level of privilege required for accessing resources. Organizations are required to restrict access to privileged user IDs to least privilege necessary for performing their job responsibilities. They are also required to assign access based on an individual's personal job classification and function. The organization should have in place an established process for documented approval by the authorized parties specifying required privileges. Requirement 8, which is assign a unique ID to each person with computer access. According to this PCI requirement, organizations must ensure that the user IDs and passwords used by employees in the organization are sufficiently complex and unique. The organization and its employees should not be using a group or shared password. Having strong security control measures in place simply requires that every authorized user has a unique identifier assigned to them. This will ensure that whenever someone accesses cardholder data, the activity can be traced to a known user or at least immediately recognized as an unauthorized access. For remote access, having in place security measures like the two-factor authentication is a must. PCIDSS Requirement 9, which is Restrict Physical Access to Workplace and Cardholder Data. Another aspect of implementing control measures involve limiting the physical access to sensitive data. 
This includes not just restricting employees, contractors, vendors, consultants, and guests to the card data environment, but also access via systems, devices, and even hard copies. Such protection requires on-site access control that not only restricts movement within an installation, but also monitors and logs it. Besides, there must be a procedure in place to identify unauthorized individuals on site and requires security personnel dedicated to ensure enforcement of these rules. All media devices must be physically secure and backups should be maintained at the site other than the primary location. Finally, it is also necessary that the organization destroys all media when the business no longer needs it. Requirement 10, which is track and monitor all access to network resources and cardholder data. PCIDSS aims to prevent various exploits by requiring organizations to monitor and test their network on a regular basis. This requires real-time monitoring, logging, and having in place forensic mechanism. Logs must be reviewed at least daily to look for anomalies and suspicious activities. Further, collecting and monitoring logs from all devices and scope must also be documented on a regular basis. All these logs need to be stored and analyzed for security events which then needs to be alerted and followed up with an incident management process. Requirement 11, which is regularly testing of security systems and processes. Organizations are required to perform regular vulnerability scanning and penetration testing either by a qualified in-house staff or an external third-party agency. They must test every quarter for wireless access points which may be used for gaining unauthorized access. Internal and external vulnerability scans are required to be performed at least every quarter or whenever a significant network change has been introduced in the environment. Other ongoing requirements include penetration testing as well as the use of intrusion detection and prevention systems for security testing. File monitoring is also a necessity. The system should perform file comparison every week to detect changes that have been made and that which has gone on unnoticed. Requirement 12, which is maintain a policy that addresses information security for all personnel. This is the final requirement which is about implementing and maintaining an information security policy for all employees of the organization and other relevant parties dealing with the company. It is necessary that the organization creates and maintains the policy addressing the information security. Further, organizations are expected to publish and disseminate these policies and procedures to all employees, vendors, and contractors dealing with the company. This should be covering all the policy and procedure documentations required, including annual risk assessment, security awareness training, third-party due diligence, and incident response plan, to name a few. There must be at least a yearly process to revisit and update all the policies set by the organization. It is also necessary that the organization ensures all security procedures and policies are in accordance with the primary information security policy. It is also important to note that these policies and procedures are documents that guides and enforces the security rules within and outside the organization. Now that we have covered all the 12 requirements of PCIDSS in brief, if you wish to learn more about the standard, you can always read our blog that covers it all in detail. Hope this video turns out to be useful to you and clears all your doubts. If you still have any queries, do drop us a mail on askus at vistainfosec.com and we'd be more than happy to help you. If you have any other questions that you would like us to take up, then do drop us a mail and we will take it up in our next videos. You can even share your valuable feedback with us and help us make these videos more useful to you. Until next time. Thank you.